We're talking about this today, factory ammunition. I hear people all the time say, factory ammo sucks and I'm saying, oh, this gun's shooting one inch with factory ammo, so I could probably get it to half an inch with a hand load. Today, we're gonna investigate if that's really true. What exactly are you missing out on by not hand loading? Or are you just totally wasting your time by hand loading? Two guns to illustrate this. First is our SIG Cross, and we love it because it's very accurate, but it's terrible with factory ammo. We have a hand load that just works so well, half MOA, but everything factory is just a little over an inch. It just doesn't shoot factory ammo very well. Being able to hand load really saved that gun purchase. On the other hand, this is a Bagara Ridge, and I told you that this gun has been very ammo picky. Now, I said ammo picky rather than not accurate in that video a few weeks ago ago because it doesn't shoot anything bad. It's not shooting any two and a half, three inch group. It's just shooting a lot of one and three quarter, two inch group. And then after trying many different loads and many of my hand loads, I tried a box of Federal ammo that it just shot really well. And we got sub MOA results after trying tons of things hand loading that didn't work. So two guns, one saved by hand loading, one saved by factory ammunition. We're gonna break this up into a few different topics to see if it's worth it to hand load or if you can just skip it. We're actually gonna pop back to the office real quick. We came out here to do a little shooting, a demonstration that we'll show a little bit later in the video. In my experience, testing lots of different rifles has a much bigger impact on the accuracy you're going to get out of your rifle than which particular rifle you choose. But we rarely talk about this because it just doesn't get the views on YouTube. So let's do a deep dive on what exactly hand loaders do to ammunition to make it shoot better. And that's gonna help us to understand the factory as well. So dive in close. There are four areas is where I really think the hand loader has the advantage in being able to customize something particularly to the rifle. Number one advantage that a hand loader has is you get to pick which bullet you use. And sometimes there are bullets that just do not agree with a particular rifle. And so the biggest change you can make hand loading is just try a different bullet. The next is which powder you use. Some powders burn faster or slower. Some are more resistant to changes in temperature. So if you're taking this hunting, you can pick a powder that's gonna work when it's 10 degrees or 100 degrees. And then to a lesser extent, maybe your primer. The first one is change bullets. Second is change powders. The third huge advantage in hand loading, and this is one that you just can't replicate in factory, is the seating depth. Seating depth means how far the bullet is pushed down into the brass. And that makes a giant difference in, in terms of uh, the accuracy. Some bullets are very picky about the seating depth. You'll move it just a tiny bit deeper or less deep in the neck and it will perform, get great accuracy or poor. Usually what makes the difference is the bearing surface on the bullet. You can see this bullet, this is an ELDX, has a long distance where all of this comes at its widest diameter. It, it goes up to here. From there to there is all the same widest diameter and then it starts getting skinnier to the nose. If a bullet has a short bearing surface, just a short little distance where it's actually touching the width of the, of the chamber, there could be some wobble and movement there um, as it's getting into the rifling. And so adjustments to seating de depth with a VLD bullet uh, could be pretty dramatic. Now in factory ammo, it's not that they're using worse powder. In most cases, they're using the same powders as a reloader would use. In some cases, they're specially formulating something for that particular cartridge. So factory has no disadvantage there in terms of the powders. Same as the bullets. I mean, the manufacturers of the bullets are really the same ones making the cartridges, and so they can um, choose bullets there. What they can't customize is how much of that powder, what the seating depth is, and the combination of those that's going to happen to work in your rifle. And so here's a sentence that will annoy people for a second until you hear the end of it. Factory ammo can never beat a good hand load, but most hand loaders can't beat good factory ammo. So for the first part of it, the reason that I say that factory ammo can never beat a good hand load is the factory really has no advantage over the hand loader. The hand loader can customize everything. With factory, they're trying to make some tried and true uh, combinations that will work on many rifles, but they're never gonna work on all of them. And it might just be okay on some others. So that's why I say that factory ammo can never beat a good hand load. But also, I really don't think most hand loaders 
can beat good factory ammo. And I think a lot of that is the way that load development is done in the industry. We're gonna talk about that in just a second, but first I wanna take a second and thank Lear Capital for sponsoring today's video because we're talking about cost in this video and the cost of factory ammo, but the biggest cost hitting our pocketbooks these days has been inflation. Uh, if, you know, if you have money sitting in a bank account, the government just printed away 15% of it and we have no control over it. And so I've been looking at ways that I can protect the money that I earn for my family and make sure that we retain that value and possibly even see it increase over time. Lear Capital helps people to invest in gold and silver. You can even do so, do so within an IRA that you already have. You can purchase physical gold um, as a store of that value. Lear Capital has some great investor guides that you can look at at LearBackfire.com or call the number down below. That's LearBackfire.com. So can hand loaders beat factory ammo? Absolutely, if you have a good load development process. I show mine in the course on Backfire Plus. Make your own, find it from somewhere else, but make sure you're finding something that is actually valid in your load development and absolutely you can beat factory ammo. But, then there's another matter. There really are two types of accuracy. One type of accuracy is mostly what we've been talking about, being able to shoot a nice group at 100 yards. But we're gonna jump out to the field now and we're gonna test something a little bit different. Basically what we do is I take 10 cartridges, one, each shot has a tenth of a grain more powder. So the 10th shot has a full grain wow. more powder That's a perfect than the first bullseye. shot. And so you would think that, oh, the shots are just gonna be in a perfect vertical line. It's going faster, and so it's gonna go higher on the page, less drop, right? Nine shots are all in one ragged hole. One, of a, one shot is, is barely two tenths of an inch outside that ragged hole. But how could that be when some of the shots had a grain more powder than the other and the velocity totally changed? That speed makes a big difference when you're at distance. For example, at 500 yards, we're two inches away by having just that 50 extra feet per second from that extra, from the little bit more powder there. So accuracy can be tested in terms of one, the group on the paper, but also the long range effects of having a consistent powder charge. So the powder charge is an area where hand loaders generally have a huge advantage over factory ammo. Factory ammo, the way that they're generally doing it is a machine is putting it in there and they're using a little laser to measure how much powder got in volumetrically, uh, you know, by volume, how high it is there, right? And that's just not going to be as accurate as measuring by weight on a scale. And that's generally what hand loaders are going to do is they're going to measure by weight. But this is another place where I have to say most hand loaders aren't getting a more consistent um, powder charge than the factory. In fact, I did a, a review of the best reloading scales last year, and I was pretty shocked at how inaccurate some of those scales were. They all say they're accurate to within a tenth of a grain. I disagree. <laughs> um, if you look back at that, some of them are really good and some of them are really not good. Um, in fact, to the point of being dangerous that they're not you know, you could be three tenths of a grain higher or lower there. So if you're near pressure, it could be a dangerous situation having that inaccurate of a powder charge. But how does factory ammo do? Well, there's some factory ammo that's absolutely terrible in its differences of the velocities. You know, I shot some Winchester ammo a few months ago that I had a 100 feet per second swing in the extreme spread of shooting 10 different cartridges. Yikes, that's not gonna work at all for shooting long range. There's way too much variance there, and that's, that's terrible. Most of it is a lot better. Uh, I'll put some numbers on the screen of just a few that I've tested recently, uh, just to give you an idea. Hand loaders generally try to get to a single digit standard deviation, so a standard deviation of nine or fewer, right? That's tough to get to, really. Um, I can pretty easily get to 12. Getting down below 10, you gotta do quite a few extra little things that uh, start to get on the time and I don't know if I care um, that much to do it. Um, so 
9, 12 feet, feet per second standard deviation reloading, I think is pretty reasonable and to be able to still produce the ammo quickly. So that's an area in the velocity where hand loading generally is going to win. So is hand loading worth it in terms of just the performance of the gun? Well, here's what I say. There are some guns where I don't feel like I need to hand load at all. For example, I recently showed you guys this guy, um, this uh, Bergara Premier Competition, and it shoots Hornady Match 140 grain perfectly. Very, very good. And so why in the world would I need to hand load it? Well, just because of the cost, which we're going to talk about in a second if I'm shooting high volume. But in terms of accuracy, it's shooting factory ammo awesome. On the other hand, this Sig Cross, again, wouldn't be one of our favorite rifles if we weren't hand loading it. And so for me, I definitely buy a huge amount of factory ammo. I like a huge amount for all the videos that we're doing. I think I spent $400 just this morning uh, just getting more factory ammo for things. So I buy a ton of factory ammo and there's a lot of it that shoots very, very well. But for guns that I'm either shooting high volume or I want um, extreme accuracy or if I want to customize it for hunting, then I'll hand load it. So here's an example. Let's say you get a 308. Well, there's a ton of different factory ammo for 308, but I doubt you're going to have a gun that likes everything you throw at it. That's probably unlikely that it'll shoot everything well. And so, you know, you find maybe one, maybe two that it that it shoots well. And so I hear people all the time say, yeah, the advantage of 308 or 30-06 or 300 Win Mag is you can shoot anything between 150 and 200 grains. And I always think like, that's true, but is your rifle going to like them all? And so is the cartridge really that versatile? If you're your rifle is only liking one. If you're hand loading, you can probably make it like mo multiple bullet weights. If you're shooting factory, boy, you're going to have to spend a lot of money to find multiple uh, grain weights that it likes and multiple loads. And so that's it. You can customize it much better to get versatility out of your gun. Okay, cost. Let's look at cost real quick. I put together a little spreadsheet here so that we can analyze the cost. So I just took as examples several different cartridges, some of them very expensive like Weatherby and some of them much less expensive, Hornady Whitetail, 29 bucks a box. And I wanted to see if you hand load it versus factory, which really ends up. So the big question here is the brass. The very first time you reload new brass, the cost is gonna be pretty high because the brass is a huge part of the, of the cost. But I can reload that brass 10, 20 times, depending on the cartridge. And so for the life of the brass, you see the cost comes way down. And so really hand loading beats the factory price on every cartridge by quite a lot. But we haven't considered all the factors yet, right? What about my time in doing it? Let's say I pay myself $30 an hour, which is a little bit silly to include your, the cost of your time because I love reloading. It's not a chore to me. So that would be like, you know, factoring in the cost of buying a surfboard is, well, what about all the time I'm going to spend surfing? This surfboard is actually thousands of dollars. You know, it's a little bit silly if you're enjoying that thing. Um, but okay, let's factor in our time. Um, and st still, we say it's cheaper on the for hand loading for almost everything. But then you say you have materials. Now, this is the big one, right? If hand loading is your hobby and you're going to buy tons of crap, you know, all these different gadgets and stuff to do it, then, you know, it's just like hunting. It's never going to be cheaper than going to the grocery store and buying meat in that case. But I have, if you go to backfire.tv and search, um, right on the homepage, I have reloading setups. You can get started for 500 bucks with a setup that is like you can make very quality ammunition. It's reasonable to use long term stuff that will last you. If you just get a setup like that and just stick with it, um, even with the intermediate um, setup, you know, it would take between 14, uh, one of them is 92, 34 boxes that you reload before you break even. But remember, that stuff is gonna last you a lifetime. Um, and so for the cost, for me, it makes sense if I'm shooting a weird cartridge. It makes sense if I want extreme precision and it's just I wanna get the most out of it. And it makes sense if I'm doing something very high volume. Just about every competitive shooter I know is reloading. You know, if you're shooting 200, 250, 300 shots every weekend um, in, a co in a competition, you're gonna have to reload. It gets really, really expensive otherwise. 
otherwise. So those are the use cases that I see. So factory ammo versus hand loading, which one is going to give you the best results? Just remember, it is one recipe, one combination of powder, primer, bullet, seating depth, everything, one thing. If it happens to work well in your gun, you're set. And really the only reason to hand load would be customization of bullets that you wanna shoot, um, or if you're shooting high volume uh, to save some money. But if you really wanna get everything out of your rifle, man, hand loading is next level what you can accomplish. Tell me what you, what you decide on that. Are you the reloader or the factory ammo guy?